Hello and welcome to the channel. It's been a bloody long time since I've made some dedicated YouTube content and I'm glad that Warhammer 3 is finally here so we can get back on with it. I have been massively excited for this and I am really, really excited to show it off to you guys. Thankfully, uh, Creative Assembly were really, really kind and gave me early access to this. So I've been playing around with it for around a week-ish, roughly, given take time restraints with children and everything like that uh, and working and you know all, all the things and the stuff uh, this is a general overview of the Nurgle faction and what to expect when playing them in the campaign I will go into greater detail in some other videos like the basics of the armies um, like what units are good what units are bad all that kind of good stuff but I figured just make some short burst videos just covering each of the factions to give you guys an idea of what's coming up and what you can expect all the factions i'm covering i will be doing campaigns of over on my twitch channel so if you want to see things as they happen please feel free to go over and check that and do feel free to like comment and subscribe and all that you know good stuff let's crack on with the very first episode so, as it stands, there's only one lord to choose in the Nurgle faction. That's Kugarth Plaguefather of the Poxmakers of Nurgle. Now, you can see the faction effects that he brings. They are growth plus 10, recruitment cost minus 35% for Nurgling units, recruitment health plus 40% for Nurgling units. His lord effects is infection cost minus 50% on his army. The Nurgle corruption is increased by plus two in the local province, and a chance of spreading plague from his army is increased by 15%. Now, Kugarth isn't really a melee lord, he's an artillery, although melee he still does slap people around relatively well. He has a ridiculous amount of healing, and we'll have a quick little butchers at his skill tree. Okay, so a quick look at Kugarth's starting skill power, or stats, or bloody whatever. So, generally speaking, he's relatively good at most things. He's got a decent melee attack, although not amazing. But it's poisoned and magical, so hey, can't argue with that. His weapon strength is relatively high. Uh, range is good. Missile strength is good and also poison attack. Yes, he's as slow as hell, but then so is absolutely everything in the Nurgle roster, which is kind of to be expected. Yeah, he starts with two spells from the Law of Nurgle stream of corruption and the miasma of pestilence he has a huge amount of passive abilities some good and some really not so good causing fear causing terror uh being demonic which whilst it gives him physical resistance he does not rout but and is immune to terror he takes damage when leadership is low now this is something that is present in every single demonic unit in the game along with wounds so you lose base weapon damage and armor but armor piercing weapon damage and speed when your health drops below 25 percent and the demonic instability which shows you know that you don't want your leadership to go down because otherwise you're just gonna melt so that's pretty much how he starts off as for skills he's got a pretty standard blue line it gives you lightning strike just like the good old days of warhammer 2 you can boost your corruption in your local province which is going to be very useful there are several different ways of improving your economy which you are going to really really need because nurgle economy is terrible at the moment he has the law of nurgle which has some seriously powerful spells in it especially under kugarth as he boosts it a bit he's got pretty much standard red line and get some nice interesting abilities later on in the lord of stench the plague the Fla plague father's oration I, I will speak properly one day i swear and pustulant abundance you get these at level 12 and you definitely want to try and grab them as soon as you possibly can okay so the other lords that you can recruit you can get a herald of nurgle now these come in two different law types you have the law of nurgle and the law of death Law of Death is pretty much unchanged from Warhammer 2, so you're probably going to be quite familiar with that. And the Law of Nurgle is the new one introduced that is just damn powerful and really damn nice. The Heralds of Nurgle are pretty much the same as what you see in the Kugarth tree skill-wise, except they can have the same chair for a mount that he does, or they can have a rot fly. Other than that, there's no real difference. And you can also have a Cultist of Nurgle, 
or the Plague Ridden, which is kind of, you know, a smaller version of the uh, Herald of Nurgles for your heroes. Ah, the other thing that I have forgotten is these guys can evolve into a great unclean one, which is kind of really nice. Yeah, I'm going to be testing that out a lot. So as we know, with Nurgle, everything is a cycle of life and death. Now, CA have represented this in the game by pretty much everything that happens around Nurgle. Get it? Around him? Cycle? Yep. I'm sorry, I'll shut up now. Your buildings, they go through a life cycle, life and death. So essentially, you will start at the base tier, you will spend a set amount to set up the building, and then once the building is completed, it will have a cycle time to move on to its next level. It won't cost you anything to upgrade the building, which is something that's really nice and handy, and you'll be able to gain some units that are, you know, generally speaking, end game units, but grab them pretty early on. Now, it's balanced out by the fact that the units don't spawn in with full health, so you're probably not going to be wanting to spawn in a whole stack and charge at your enemies, because you're only going to be about half strength, not even that. The only requirement that is apparent with the cycle system is that your settlement building itself must be the appropriate tier to be able to go on to the next stage of the cycle. So you can see here, the first tier that you'll need is tier 3 to be able to go on to tier 5 of the Plague Flesh Poppies. Now something else that's really important with the Chaos Campaigns is the corruption. Nurgle's corruption is what fuels his growth. So the more corruption you have, the faster you're going to grow, the faster your cities will go through its cycles, and, you know, you're not going to take so much of a penalty on being on the lower tiers. So being able to spread as much corruption is going to be absolutely key to your campaign. You can do this through, you know, winning battles, being in enemy's territory and spreading corruption to their lands, having certain buildings that increase it, certain skills also increase it, and you can also spread plagues, which we will cover in a moment. Nurgle corruption is relatively easy to spread, um, as you could pretty much just spam out some lords and have them constantly hovering around, just, you know, corrupting everything they touch in true Nurgle style. Okay, so the next little mechanic that's quite important with the Nurgle faction is infections. Now this is a currency that will become very, very important for you because this is what your plagues cost. You generate infections from certain buildings, from certain skill abilities, also from winning battles. You can have it as an option at the bottom instead of, you know, taking hostages or executing, that kind of thing. One of them is generate infections. And also when you uh, sack and raise settlements, there is an option to loot and raise, uh, loot and occupy, sorry, which then gives you infections. You're going to want to generate as many of these as possible so you can absolutely spam out plagues everywhere you're going because, let's face it, Nurgle's love is what's going to see you through the campaign. Now on to the big boy mechanic, the Plague Cauldron. You have five base plagues to start with, first one being Plague Pox, which is a bit of a unique one because it's the only one that actually has positive effects just for Nurgle and no negative effects on the enemy. The second one, Plague Bubos, third is Plague Agu, fourth is Plague Rot, and fifth is Plague Palsy. Now, you also can boost the power of the plagues through a series of symptoms, these cost infections to apply and increase the overall cost of your of your plague that you're dishing out. You have to unlock them by spreading the base plague that is above them a set amount of times, except for the last row, which is unlocked in the technology tree. You also get recipes, which are little things that boost the strength of your plagues even more. And to unlock these, you have to have unlocked specific symptoms. You can either infect a friendly army or friendly city for a lower cost, or you can summon a plague cultist and, you know, slam them in with a big wet kiss from Nurgle into whatever enemy you like. They all give you an absolute massive, you know, amount of different buffs and debuffs to the enemy. I won't cover them all because there's just too many. Okay, so the tech tree. Now, in true Nurgle fashion, there are seven parts to it. Now, it's, you know, one of the numbers of Nurgle, which I think three is as well, but I don't know. 
I'm not the most polished on the law. Now, they... So, the technology tree. Uh, in true Nurgle style, it's split down into seven trees, you know, being that the number of the Plague Lord. The tech tree is relatively simple and straightforward to follow. You need to unlock four techs in the first tree to be able to advance onto the next. They vary greatly, generally speaking, in what's in it. They all have a symptom, I forgot the word then, for your plagues. And then they have various boosts for the campaign or for units. And they generally are leveled out pretty well with the level with the units that you'll probably have at that point in the game. You're not going to be getting too many things for units you're not going to see in a considerable length of time. I do like this tech tree. I think it's very straightforward and it's just very useful. So another reason why corruption is so important is that Nurgle has the typical chaos mechanic, which you are going to see in every single chaos faction focus I show you. The Unholy Manifestations. This is a part of the great game where the Chaos Gods are trying to tickle each other to try and sit on the throne for a little bit longer. Now, Nurgle starts off with one Unholy Manifestation unlocked instantly, which is Pestilent Growth. This gives you 20% re replenishment rate in local province, but your movement is disabled for two turns. So, could be useful after just recruiting an army and speeding them up in the healing process so you can go and march off to your enemies. Now, the way that you advance in this is through your corruption. This is, again, why it's so important to be spreading as much corruption as possible. So you can then get the higher unholy manifestations, which give you some really nice effects. The first one being for a cost of a thousand corruption, or at least it will unlock at a thousand corruption. It doesn't cost corruption, sorry. You have a chance of plague spreading increased by 30% in the local province, and your campaign movement is stopped for three turns you then get unlocked to 2000 exponential growth which gets a growth of 200 and recruitment cost of minus 20 percent and this lasts for three turns and then the big boy of them all is nurgle's visitation which is unlocked at 3000 a random plague will be given to every enemy settlement and army in this province well, not enemy i've just added that word in there for no apparent reason and the campaign movement is disabled during the completion time. This could be really useful for just plague bombing the hell out of your enemies. And could be really damn interesting to see how fast and how much the plagues could spread. Now once you actually manage to get Nurgle ascended onto the Great Throne. It boosts the strength of all of these massively. So you're definitely going to want to be doing it as much as you can. Okay, so how the army performs and a general overview. I'm not going to go into too much detail over the army because I'm going to save that for a separate video. You know, covering what units are good, what units are bad, what you should, shouldn't do, that kind of thing. Yada, yada, yada. But the basis of it, Nurgle is a slow moving tanky army that is going to draw your enemies into a battle of attrition. The longer they stay locked in against your en against you, the more damage they are going to take because you're whittling down their defenses. And I'm not just talking about, about the fact that you're obviously hurting them while you're fighting them. Being the fact that they're all poisoned, they start draining away at the enemy's defense and melee attack and speed and various other things just from being locked in battle with them. So the longer they have to fight you, the worse it is for them. You have a lot of melee options with some hybrid units, which is quite nice. There's a lot of beasts in the Nurgle army, as you can imagine. And with the beasts in Nurgle, they give you regeneration on your units. You've then also got the Soul Grinders, which Nurgle's ones are absolutely ridiculous and probably actually the best Soul Grinders in the game. Along with some other ranged units, which just aren't so great. Overall, I really like the Nurgle faction. I think the mechanics of the campaign have been done very well. They're very good. It can feel very slow, but then that's kind of to be expected. The only downside is the poor economy and the fact that your units spawn in, you know, half dead. So you're kind of struggling to be able to move anywhere. Beyond that, it's a very fun campaign and spreading, spreading plagues is absolutely brilliant and just so damn enjoyable. The only thing I would want more of is some more ranged units in the Nurgle army. 
even if it was, you know, some form of Nurgle sorcerer, that kind of thing, because I just feel like they don't really have enough offense on the table. But that's all. That's it. I've really, really liked this, and I'm so glad to be back to making some content at long last on YouTube, so please do free to follow, comment, like, subscribe, all the stuff and things. I'll leave my Patreon below if you want to support the channel. We will be pumping out an absolute ton of Warhammer 3 content wherever I can, and also there will be a lot of campaigns going on on my Twitch channel, so please feel free to check that out. Thank you guys, and I will catch you gits in the next one.